Hi, uh, hello once again. I hope one of the many times you visit my channel Discover Social Sciences. And uh, with this video, I am opening a separate series, a separate path of educational content uh, devoted to behavioral modeling and content marketing. It is essentially a series of videos addressed most specifically to my students, to my students in the major of uh, film and TV production management. Uh, and this is like a monographic course, a monographic subject, which I develop largely in connection with my research on collective intelligence and on the application of artificial intelligence, of, on the application of artificial neural networks for studying uh, social systems. So, without uh, further delay, we go into the contents of that course. So, and as usually, I go into my favorite uh, mode of presentation, which is a PowerPoint. In a moment, I will show you the PowerPoint presentation. Now, I will be progressively f a, a sort of receding to the corner of the window, just to tell you that if you are my students in that major film and TV production, you graduate this course, so the course to which those videos, behavioral modeling and content marketing correspond, you graduated with a project. I will explain you step by step how this project is uh, supposed to be prepared and what it is supposed to be like. And I hope that this video will give you some ideas as for what you should be prepared for. Okay, we go into the presentation. So, Behavioral Modeling and Content Marketing Part 1. We start with a basic assessment of situation. Let's imagine that you do what you are doing right now. You sit in front of a screen, your computer, your tablet, your phone, and you are watching this video. You are interacting with some online content. And what exactly do you interact with? So you interact with two things or two distinct phenomena. You interact with a stream of sensory simulation. You interact with a stream of visual data or visual stimulation and a stream of auditory stimulation. So this specific online content stimulates your sight and your hearing. And by that intermediary, that content stimulates your brain and your entire nervous system. On the other hand, what you are interacting with is a code. Because what you watch on the screen is just a form taken by a digital code. You can imagine if you watched Matrix, the movie, you can now imagine that this image, that the, this video is full like of those streaming zeros and ones. So this is a code and in the same time it is a stream of sensory stimulation for your brain. That code is more and more frequently, almost always, currently, a form of artificial intelligence and therefore you are interacting with an intelligent logical structure which feeds you sensory stimulation and to which you feed back with your behavior. Excuse me, I made a mistake here. Okay, with our behavior. So the interaction that we are in when we interact with any online content is an interaction when the online content learns from us and we learn from it. And by learning, I mean simply modification of behavior. When you watch a video, you modify the way that your internet browser or many of the social platforms you use will operate in the future. Hmm? 
And here, and here is like the next almost axiomatic statement in that, uh, in that course, that we always undergo behavioral change. Sorry, once again, a mistake. I am correcting that presentation as I am recording that video. I hope you excuse me. So we always undergo behavioral change in interaction with online content. Why do I say that? Would you set and maintain a website, for example, for selling something, if you knew that people who visit that website will not modify their behavior at all? No, you probably wouldn't. Whatever website you maintain or set up, you expect people to react to content presented on that website. So you expect them to modify their behavior. That's the point and the business of any online content. So whoever puts any content online, they do it in the hope of provoking a reaction. This is simple. This is, uh, this is something we frequently forget about, but if, even me, when I am now recording this specific video, I expect a reaction from you, my viewers. Eh? I expect you to modify your behavior somehow under the impact of that video. If you don't modify your behavior at all, it is a failure for, for me. Any, any kind of success is conceivable for me when you do change your behavior when you learn something under the impact of that video and repeated reaction from the part of for example you my viewers turns into habits and habits turn into new behavioral patterns so it is safe to assume and accept that any interaction with online content changes our way of being in the world and this is something like Capital, something we only start understanding right now as a society, that the business of digital content is the first business ever in human history which essentially aims at and consists in modifying human behavior. All the other industries that we know automotive industries, machine industry, even electronics, st strictly speaking, food industry, whatever we think of, it all these are industries which essentially transform some resources into profit, into goods, into services. But the industry of digital content is unique. The business, the point and the essence of this specific industry of digital content is to transform human behavior. It is as if we had built a big collective teacher that is supposed to train us in the view of, well, and, that, and this is a good question, in the view of what? And anyway, Online content has always some kind of business attached to it and that business can run smoothly and can grow only if the content, if, if the content does the job of modifying human behavior. Now, what does the concept behavioral mean? Here I placed uh, in the visual part of the slide the cover of a book uh, written by B.F. Skinner, Burhus, uh, I think, Fitzgerald Skinner. Anyway, by a psychologist or a scientist who is supposed to be like the founding father of what we today know as behaviorism. Skinner assumed that what we can really observe in humans and in any living organism is behavior. We cannot really see or observe people, uh, the thoughts that people have. We cannot really observe emotions. We cannot really observe ideas. What we can observe is behavior. And the term behavioral uh, re refers to a method of studying human behavior as informative 
about the cognitive processes and emotions. So behaviorism aims at like linking what people say, they think and feel on the one hand and how they behave on the other hand. And in the same time, behavioral uh, or the concept of behavioral refers to that whole theory based on the work of B.F. Skinner, where human behavior is a recurrent sequence of actions possible to modify with reinforcements, positive or negative. In subsequent videos, I will go more in depth into those positive or negative reinforcements, because unfortunately, as in many fields of science, there is a lot of bullshit that has accumulated over time around that concept of positive or negative reinforcement. So you can assume that the business of digital content is connected to behaviorism just as strongly as it is to cybernetics and electronics. If you see YouTube, if you see Facebook, if you see Booking.com, if you see Netflix, all those businesses, and I named just like e e examples from a big industry, all those businesses are based on the behavioral theory. And I would say that the behavioral or the behaviorist part in the functioning of those businesses is even more important than the strictly digital part or the strictly technological part. Because the technology, for example, the technology behind Facebook is quite simple as compared, for example, to the technology behind integrated digital systems that you have in a manufacturing business. The technology is simple, but the behaviorist theory behind it is complex. And here I allowed myself to put a quote from B.F. Skinner. The strengthening of behavior which results from reinforcement is appropriately called conditioning. In operant conditioning, we strengthen an operant in the sense of making a response more probable or in actual fact more frequent. Why did I put it here? Because that's the, a more analytical approach to what I call the behavioral modification after or in interaction with the online content. People who operate platforms like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Netflix, and with Netflix, by the way, they say it explicitly, their purpose is to provoke in us a certain type of behavior just once and then to repeat it until it becomes frequent and predictable in its frequency. That's the idea of behavioral modification. So, re returning like to the broad view on that course of behavioral modeling and content marketing. This is not a course of psychology. I am not a psychologist. I don't feel qualified to talk about the fine uh, niceties of psychology, but I am a social scientist. So, from my point of view, humans are observable mostly from outside. And from my life experience, I know that, I know that what people say they think and want is one thing, what they really want and think is another thing, and what they do is still another thing. And in this course, we focus on that do part. So this is a course of business with a behaviorist edge. I want you to understand in this course how those businesses like Netflix, Facebook, or, uh, or Twitter, how they work from the point of view of like interaction with the user and the user is you or me. And now a short glimpse at what I expect my students in this course to prepare. So, uh, so on your research project. So you graduate this course by preparing a project where you describe with a real life case the basic relation between the business of digital content and behavioral change. Uh, I will show you in subsequent videos many possible specific paths you can take 
in that study, but that's like the general idea of studying real life situations when interaction with digital content changes our behavior. Okay, so that would be all in that first video. I want to go gently and nicely, not to overflow you with information. I hope you retained some from uh, some information from this short lesson and well as usually when I uh, finish my videos I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with life bye